Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Renu Tyagi from Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi. Today I am going to speak on the module Functioning of Government Institution under the paper Research Method and Field Work. The learning objectives of this module are number one to study the policies and perspective towards the tribe in India. Number two, to study the government institution which are set up for the administration of the tribal and the elaborate manner in which they function. And at the end, we will try and understand the institution of local self-governance. First of all, let us have a brief introduction on the tribal and indigenous people of India. The tribal and indigenous people of India constitute an important segment of the Indian population. They are duly listed in the constitution which also accord them special rights and privileges. Scheduled tribe is an administrative term used for the purpose of administering certain specific constitutional privileges, protection and benefit for specific section of people, historically considered disadvantaged and backward. The Indian constitution protects tribal interest through the 5th and the 6th schedule. The greatest challenge that the government of India has been facing since independence is the proper provision of social justice to the scheduled tribe people by ameliorating their socio-economic conditions. Also, understanding, promoting and preserving their culture have become important while formulating various developmental program for the tribal and there is a need for knowledge advocacy which in turn would help formulate evidence based policy and planning. The policy towards tribe is rather complex as it aims to balance the improvement of their condition on the one hand and a degree of assimilation with preservation of their distinctiveness and measure of autonomy on the other. Generally speaking, policy and administration of the tribal have been approached from three viewpoints. The policy of isolation, policy of assimilation and policy of integration. The tribal development in India is based on twin approach namely protection of their interest through legislative and administrative support and promotion of developmental effort through the planned schemes. The tribals were allowed to have institutions in accordance with their traditional customary laws and practices. This was done to preserve their cultural identities, interest and allay their fear of exploitation at the hands of the non-tribal. Therefore, a variety of institutions dominated by the traditional tribal culture with semi-autonomous and self-managing indigenous local institution at different level exist. Changes however have been introduced from time to time. In most cases these changes have been introduced in response to the administrative needs for the various developmental policies of the state. Here the map shows the state wise tribal population in India according to census of India 1991. Now let's study this special program for their welfare including the support of educational and economic interest and protection from injustice and all forms of exploitation. After independence a secular constitution was adopted to govern the country. Several constitutional provisions were made for the development of the tribe. Many schemes of development were formulated and implemented. Several schemes of tribal development are still active through several five-year plans in India. Attempts have been made to make the scheduled tribe to develop socially, educationally, economically, politically and culturally. Alongside the constitution of India has made definite provision for the welfare and uplift of the tribal people throughout the country. To realize their objectives and implement the constitutional provisions, various government institutions were set up and are functioning to fulfill the objectives and continuously assess the prevalent situation to address to the changing time and demands. 
for the development of the tribes various models approaches and theories of development have been propounded in different five year plan period some of them include community development program multi purpose tribal block tribal development block development agencies primitive tribal groups integrated tribal development projects modified area development approach tribal sub plans dispersed tribal development programs centrally sponsored schemes in the five year plan the program for the welfare of the scheduled tribe aims at number 1 raising the productivity level in agriculture animal husbandry forestry cottage and small scale industries etc to improve the economic condition number 2 is the rehabilitation of the bonded labor number 3 is education and training program number 4 is special development program for women and children let's now have a look at the various government institution that are set up for the administration of the tribal communities these institutions function to realize the objective envisaged in the constitution for their growth and development and continuously access the prevalent situation to address to the changing times and demands the ministry of tribal affair a branch of the government of india looks after the affair of the tribal communities in india ministry was set up in 1999 after the bifurcation of the ministry of social justice and empowerment to have a more focused approach on the integrated socio economic development of the scheduled tribe population which is the most underprivileged of the indian society the ministry of tribal affair is the nodal ministry for overall policy planning and coordination of the program for the development of scheduled tribe ministry of tribal affair has undertaken activities that follows from the subject allocated under the government of india that is allocation of business rules 1961 the subjects allocated to the ministry of tribal affair are number 1 social security and social insurance to the scheduled tribe number 2 tribal welfare the tribal welfare planning project formulation research evaluation statistics and training it also includes promotion and development of the voluntary efforts on the tribal welfare besides its add to the scheduled tribe including the scholarship to the students belonging to such tribes it also focuses on the development of scheduled tribe with all matters including the legislation relating to their rights of the forest dwellers scheduled tribe on forest land the fifth schedule of the constitution provide for the setting up a tribe advisory council in each of the state having the scheduled areas according to this provision tribes advisory councils have been set up so far in the state of andhra pradesh bihar madhya pradesh orissa punjab rajasthan and west bengal the duty of this council is to advise the government on such matters concerning the welfare of scheduled tribe and development of scheduled areas advisory boards for the scheduled tribes have been set up in assam kerala and mysore to advise the state governments tribes advisory committee have also been formed in the union territories of andaman and nicobar island himachal pradesh manipur and tripura government schemes are designed and launched once the specific need assessment of the scheduled tribe and their practices is done to illustrate a large number of the tribal people practice shifting cultivation and this problem is in acute form in the state of andhra pradesh assam bihar madhya pradesh orissa manipur and tripura a scheme to control the shifting cultivation has been started Besides this Andhra Pradesh Bihar Tamil Nadu Orissa Uttar Pradesh have launched schemes to improve irrigation facilities to reclaim waste land and to distribute it among members of the scheduled caste and tribe 
In addition, facilities for the purchase of the livestock, fertilizer, agricultural equipment, better seeds are also provided to them. Cattle breeding and poultry farming are also being encouraged among these people. The government of different states are encouraging the development of the cottage industry by providing loans and subsidies through various schemes. Multipurpose cooperative societies which provide credit in cash and kind to the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe have been established in various states such as Andhra Pradesh, Bihar, Tamil Nadu and Orissa etc. Tribal and Harijan Research Institute which undertake intensive studies of tribal art, culture and customs have been set up in states like Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Orissa, Rajasthan and West Bengal. The tribal development blocks were introduced for the development of tribal areas. These tribal development blocks were expected to have their role in the matter of economic developments, education, health and communication. By the end of the third five-year plan, there were more than 500 such tribal development blocks serving around 40% of the total tribal population in the country. But no further expansion of the tribal development block to other areas of the tribal concentration took place after the third five-year plan. During the fourth plan, six tribal agencies were started and another two were added during the fifth plan. These agencies were expected to incorporate elements of economic development, social services and other progressive measures. In actual practices, the TDAs could not do anything other than the agricultural development and construction of the roads. But the experience gained from the TDAs provided valuable means for evolving the better policies and program for the development of scheduled tribe. The approach and strategy for the tribal development was revised comprehensively on the eve of fifth five-year plan. It was thought as recommended by the Shiloh or committee that tribal development blocks as an instrument of tribal development were unsuitable to tackle the complex tribal problems. Besides, the situation in tribal areas in terms of resources, target groups, local priorities were different from the non-tribal areas. Even within the tribal areas, problems faced by all the tribal people are not uniform in nature. To tackle the complex and diverse tribal problems more effectively, a comprehensive program of the development known as the Tribal Subplan was prepared under the fifth five-year plan. Accordingly, all areas with more than 50% tribal population were treated as subplan area. A development block was taken as the smallest unit of the development under this new strategy. This unit is known as the Integrated Tribal Development Project that is ITDP. The major objective of the tribal development can be understood as number one, to take up the family oriented programs in order to raise productivity level of the beneficiary families in the field of agriculture, horticulture, animal husbandry, small scale industry, etc. Number two, to liberate the tribals from the exploitation of the land grabbing, money lending, debt, bondage, forest, labor, etc. Number three is to improve the quality of the life through education and training program. Number four is to provide the infrastructural facilities in the tribal areas. On the 89th Amendment of the Constitution coming into force on 19 February 2004, the National Commission for Scheduled Tribe has been set up under Article 338A on bifurcation of the erstwhile National Commission for Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribe to oversee the implementation of various safeguards provided to Scheduled Tribe under the Constitution. 
By this amendment, the erstwhile National Commission for Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribe was replaced by two separate commission, namely the National Commission for the Scheduled Caste, that is NCSC, and the second one is the National Commission for the Scheduled Tribe, that is NCST. Important function of the NCST, amongst other, are number one, to investigate and monitor all matters relating to the safeguard provided for the scheduled tribe under the constitution or under any other law for the time being in force or under any order of the government and to evaluate the working of such safeguards. Number two is to inquire into specific complaints with respect to the deprivation of the rights and safeguard of the scheduled tribe. Number three is to participate and advise in the planning process of socio-economic development of scheduled tribe and to evaluate the progress of their development under the union and any state. Now let's understand the steps taken towards empowering the scheduled tribe. The Ministry of Tribal Affairs has the responsibility of reducing these glaring gaps by supplementing the efforts of the nodal ministries in the government and of the state governments through need-based intervention. It has taken up a series of programs and schemes to empower the tribal socially, politically and economically. However, in this context, it is pertinent to mention that governor have a vital role to play. The governors have been endowed with certain special power with regard to the fifth scheduled areas. The judicious use of the provisions enshrined in the fifth schedule of our constitution will certainly make a very positive impact on the tribals living in these regions. Now let's have a look at the role of the local self-governing institution. The local self-governing institution in the present development scenario have attained enormous attention because of the catalytic role played by these institutions towards promoting self-governance and local development. Particularly since 1990, these institutions have witnessed a paradigm shift in the context of the institutionalization through constitutional reforms and promoting self-governance as per the customs, tradition and cultural practices of the tribals. Further, several legal provisions have come up to strengthen the roots of local governments in the rural areas of India since 1990. Particularly in the case of tribal areas, the enactment of the provision of panchayats, extension to the scheduled areas, Act of 1996, the PESA Act, that is PISA Act, is considered as a landmark development towards strengthening the grassroots. The focus of the Panchayat Extension Scheduled Areas Act 1996 PESA is to recognize the Gram Sabha as a key unit of governance in the scheduled areas as this would in turn give the people a control over their own resources. Now let's summarize what we have learnt so far in this module. The tribal population are placed at the lowest rungs of the society in terms of various developmental indicators. The lowest literacy rates, high dropout rates, widespread poverty, high infant and maternal mortality rates, an alarmingly high incidence of the malnutrition, the absence of the basic facilities and scarce livelihood means have deprived them the opportunity to a dignified livelihood among the fellow citizens of our country. The government institutions set up for the administration of these communities function to realize the objectives envisaged in the constitution for their growth and development. Despite the various efforts that have been made, a large gap still remains to be bridged. The alienation of the tribal population has been growing rapidly, mainly because they are being dispossessed of all their livelihood resources. The diversion of the forest and common property resources for the use of 
non forest purposes have resulted in the displacement of scheduled tribe from their homeland consistent efforts are being made to address and bring effective solution to the problem being faced by these communities with the intervention of government and other possible measures thank you